Welcome everyone. I'm Carlos, illustrator and digital artist. This is a tutorial for Rebel 7. I will paint this beautiful mountain and teach you some of the techniques I use. I will use a new format for this tutorial. I will make it shorter and more focused. I guess I'm always telling the same things, and I fast forward too much the desktop footage, making it nearly impossible to follow. This time I will do real time when I need to teach you something. When I speed up, it will be the auto time lapse instead of real footage. Let me know in the comments which format you prefer, this new one, or the other I used before that. Enough chit chat, let's go to the painting. Usually I paint a la prima, which means painting without drawing. But this mountain is so special, so I wanted to be more precise. I use the guide rulers to help me being more precise with locations and proportions. Watch my charcoal portrait tutorial to learn about that feature. For the size, I used 4K size and 16:9 aspect ratio. On this tutorial, I'm gonna use custom brushes. They are from a huge brush collection I'm building. I need to test them, so I will use them in a while. Don't worry, you can use any of the default oil brushes. Maybe you will not have so many options, but there's always a default equivalent. For non precise landscapes, I prefer to paint with only one layer. But this time I will work on three layers. One for the sky, the second one for the mountain, and the last one will be the foreground. This process is known as flat painting. This means painting the main areas with flat colors, in different layers for each area. Then you paint using these layers directly, or using them as a mask for clip layers. A clipped layer is one that is attached to the base layer. When you paint here, you will never paint outside the boundaries of the base layer. As a general advice for oil painting, always start with thin brushes. Don't start with high impasto brushes, especially on distant features. When you approach in distance and detail, you may start using brushes with impasto. For the sky, I paint a gradient with a soft bristles brush. Don't make the gradient too strong, this is unrealistic. For the mountain I use a knife tool. You can use any brush, this is only to cover the area with painting. In this case, the mountain edges are very sharp, so it's better you use square or flat brushes. For the foreground, in this case I only painted a little of green. For the mountains I will use palette knives. They are the best to replicate the sharp edges of the mountains. Any of them serve, but it must have some texture or graininess. In case the knife don't have any grain, reduce the oiliness to minimum. This will make the knife react to the canvas. Usually I build the shapes and colors slowly. But this time I try to paint directly, as close as possible to the reference. During this process, I always use the knives. The more variety of textured knives you have, the better. If you want more texture variety, reduce the oiliness and change to different art surfaces. The graininess of the knives also helps to create the feel of distant trees. You never want to paint the distance trees like real trees. Even when using stamping brushes, it will have too much detail. It's better to focus on the peak of the mountain, adding more detail here. About the mountain, this is the Pedroforca. It's one of the mythic mountains of Catalonia, Spain. This is the third time I paint this mountain. The first time I was too fancy. The second I painted it with an unrealistic setting. 
you can watch time-lapse videos of each artwork in my channel. This time I wanted to paint it more realistic. For the reference I used an own photo I took six days ago. It was a nice trip, plenty of beautiful mountains and valleys, not only the Pedroforca. If you like this mountain and want to paint it, you will find many references on internet, almost all of them are photos taken from the same place I did. I spend most of the time painting the mountain. I slowly paint here and there, adding the shades, building volumes, and trying to use the right colors. For this area, don't use dark colors. The bright colors may be closer to white, but never use pure white. The shadow areas look bluish, this is due to the skylight reflection. Even if your reference don't have this blue shift, it's a good idea you add blue on shadow areas when you paint distant objects. There's some houses on the mountain slope. Paint them with any flat or square brush. I start painting the foreground area. There's only trees here. My brushes have so many splatters, which will help to create the feel of leaves. For that purpose, you can use any of the brushes on the new Rebel 7 Grunge brushes, but tapping with them instead of painting directly. Now I'm gonna show you a trick, thanks to a change made recently in Rebel. Rebel 7 added longer dirty brush. We will use it in our advantage. I will show you how. This is a nice trick for painting trees and bushes. In Oils Properties panel, activate the dirty brush by taping the icon or by pressing Alt-D. When the dirty brush mode is active, you pick colors directly from your painting when you paint with any of the blending modes. But not when you use paint mode. The trick is to pick colors from an area in blend mode. Then switch to paint mode. To understand it better, watch it in action. Slow or stop the video if needed. And practice that in Rebel. This is one of these tricks that's good to understand and remember. You must do that on the same layer, it will not work using different layers. I paint a shading of greens on any empty area of the layer. I will erase that when I finish painting. When the dirty brush is active, I change to blend mode by pressing the shortcut for. When in blender mode, I tap once over the shading of greens I painted. Now our brush will paint with the colors or we are tapped. This is like the cloning tool, with the advantage that it will apply a copy of that zone with the shape and rotation of our brush. Switch to paint mode by pressing 1. This is important, otherwise it will not work. Please don't deactivate the dirt brush mode. Hoi you can start tapping over your paint. Each tap will apply the shade of greens. You can do that many times, until you deactivate the dirt brush. It will not last forever, but enough to use this technique. Before Rebel 7, the dirt brush remembered the colors for too short. It wasn't practical until Rebel 7. Watch how the brush strokes add lots of volume only with a simple tap of your brush.
In the foreground area, you must use dark and more saturated colors. The difference in values and tones helps to create distance and perspective. For the branches, use any brush with high oiliness. Avoid using grainy brushes. For the leaves, use any of the grunge brushes you used before. But don't paint so many leaves, always keep some zones unpainted. I add a little of contrast by using the brightness contrast filter. I add a little of color shift by using layer mode overlay and painting with orange and different greens. It's good to have variety. I do it in a clip layer to avoid painting outside the foreground area. The main painting is done. I painted more details than usual. Now it's time to make tweaks here and there. I start tweaking the mountain colors by using different rebel filters. The mountain looks better, but the feel of distance is reduced dramatically. To solve that, I add lightness in the lower areas of the mountain. I use the knives again with lower oiliness. It's good to paint always with same brushes to achieve the same look and feel. At the same time, I add details and volume. Usually you only do one thing at a time, but this is a process of doing different things. Now you add light, then a detail, and some shadows if needed. You are always back and forth. During that process, you must watch the entire mountain and see what lacks. Don't put too much details here. I use different layer modes, like overlay, lightness, and soft light. This is the final stage. I left the clouds for the final part. But to be honest, I forgot to paint the right branches. I paint the clouds. For clouds, there's a lot of techniques. Usually, you paint the general cloud shapes with any brush, then you blend the edges, especially the bottom areas. Then you add a little of shadows using a bluish gray and blend them. After that, you add some highlights with white.
I forgot to record this part. It was very short, but very important. I retouched the colors to look more like autumn and the sky more cyan. I also decided I don't like these clouds, so I start over. I used the same approach as before, but I used a rough brushes. I added the minimum clouds as possible, avoiding the peak area. To be honest, I didn't have clear what to do. But it looks good for me, so I finished the clouds. Now it's really finished. This means break time. After that break, I start making small tweaks here and there. I really liked as it was. I selected a grainy brush and change it to eraser mode by pressing the shortcut 5. I use it to make the edges of the peak look not so sharp and more rocky. And nothing more relevant. A brush stroke here and there, no more. Remember always to sign your artwork. And this is it for the mountain oil tutorial. I hope you like this tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you prefer this style or the one I used before. Ask me anything in the comments. Maybe this tutorial is too fast and you need better explanations in some areas. I will answer any doubt you have. Be happy and see you in the next video.